right guys, here's a cold start on a 1974 IROC RSR. Now it's carbureted, right? So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and adjust this. You need to go ahead and pull out the choke here, uh, open up the carburetor so that it lets a good amount of fuel and air into the engine. Still Le Mans style like every Porsche. Go ahead and make sure you're in neutral. This turns on the battery, that turns on the pump. Okay, that primes the engine, and then this one, she'll fire. Okay, almost. And one more. maybe fourth gear pull. My name is Adam, welcome back to Driven Nashville. If you're new to the channel, we produce weekly enthusiast-driven car content, and I got something extra special for you today. What you're looking at right here is a 1974 911 IROC replica. Now in 1973, Porsche came out with what they called the RSR, the Ren Sport Endurance, uh, a lot of different things I've been learning about these particular vehicles, and they were essentially a race-derived car or as race-like as you could get for a 911 of the day. Now, in 1974 and 1975, Roger Penske and a couple of friends got together and they said, hey, why don't we have what they call an IROC or International Race of Champions series? What they did is they bought the best racers, right? I'm talking uh, Mark Donahue, I'm talking uh, Richard Petty, uh, Mario Andretti, right? From essentially IMSA, you know, uh, basically NASCAR, Formula One, right? Let's get all of these guys together. Let's give them identical vehicles. And and what they gave them was this right here. Now this is a tribute car, so it's not an original car, but essentially the Porsche made 15, 15 identical 911 race cars. The only thing that was different was the colors. Now this particular car is in lime green. Um, you know, obviously most of the cars of the day were had liveries on them, and they were in the brighter colors, but the drivers actually had to switch out cars after each race. Uh, that way that, that essentially tested the skills of everybody completely identically. And I think that's really cool. Now, Mark Donahue actually won the first one, took a million dollar purse home with him, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. They only actually ran the Porsches, I believe, for one year or maybe two years, and then they eventually ended up going to <laughs> Camaros, ironically. Um, now, the reason why I heard the rumor is anyways, is that the drivers had a hard time with the transmission. Now, let me tell you about this car just briefly. This is a extensive 10-year build. Did a fantastic booklet. Uh, I'm talking detailed with receipts spanning 10 years. And the, the, the attention to detail that this gentleman did is, is really second to none. The car has been completely built to be as close to uh, 
a, a 911 IROC edition. Let me just say real quick, I'm really starting to grow an attachment to these classic vehicles. And not just the classic Porsches, but just classic cars in general. There's just something about the feeling of the visceral nature of an old school car that you cannot get from a modern car. And it really boils down to a sensation of fear. I really believe that. There's something very, very challenging about this car to drive. I mean, very, very challenging. It, it's got a transmission that you got to kind of blip the throttle to slot it in. Uh, it sticks a little bit until it warms up. The brakes are, you know, hydraulic. The steering is hydraulic. There's no power assisted. There's no trash control. All that 2,000 pounds of weight, most of it's in the rear. So it's just a very, very visceral, very challenging car to drive. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment, a sense of thrill that frankly, very, very, very few modern cars are gonna give you. And every time I get out of this car, I feel like a new person, right? I feel like it's just checked so many of my car boxes, you know, that I look for when I drive a car almost more than any modern car I've driven in years. I tell you to build this car today in today's dollars, I would say you'd be in it for at least $130,000. And that's not even including the original nine, uh, 1975 911 donor car. All right guys, here is our engine. So we have a three liter twin plug engine. Um, I mean, this thing has Carrillo rods, ARP head bolts, high revving valve springs, RSR cams, uh, RSR headers. Aluminum flywheel and pressure plate. The particular horsepower on this car was dynoed uh, about 258 horsepower and putting a little over 206 horsepower to the wheels. Uh, I will tell you with this car weighing about 2,000 pounds, uh, it's plenty fast. It's air cooled, it's carbureted. You're gonna, you know, you saw in the beginning uh, the engine firing up, takes a few, uh, you know, few cycles to get it to fire. Obviously when it's warm, it'll fire right up, but uh, Fantastic built motor, uh, car has had no problems, uh, runs great. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the uh, there's definitely some serious money in this engine. All right, real quick, coming to the front of the vehicle here. Uh, obviously this is not used for storage anymore. This is a 16 gallon fuel tank, runs on premium gas. And then coming on the inside here of the vehicle, now, when we originally got the car, and we're happy to give the car uh, to you with the racing seats, this came with original Recaro seats uh, to match the original Tribute cars. Uh, we ended up taking them out. Uh, they were a little constrictive, and we wanted to make this a little bit more of a GT car. Um, however, if you want to put the Recaros back in, you're welcome to. But these do have four-point Sparco racing harnesses. You also see here that, you know, overall, the gauges are still for the most part original uh, obviously this is that old 911 trick with its it's tilted no steering wheel feels great overall it's a comfortable car especially with these seats uh, you could take this on a rally and not hate yourself you know everything is just dialed in from the roof to the roll cage back here to the carpet kind of like the new modern cars here this is actually how you open the car so you just kind of give this a slight pull and it pops right open Kind of a cool nod to the uh, the old cars and to the new modern cars, right? Because all the new R, you know, RS cars have that. You know, as I mentioned when we first started the car, you know, here's your choke and uh, here's your defrost, your parking brake, and there's really not much else to the car from the interior. You know, I thought it might be fun just to show you the book a little bit. Um, so this is amazingly, amazingly well documented car. You know, here you go right here, and uh, it talks a little bit about the history. Uh, talks about the racing series, talks about how he actually got the original donor car, uh, what he originally paid for it, the $98,607 and the 11 years. And he mentions here hundreds, if not thousands of personal. Oh, talks about the engine here, which I just covered in one of my clips. Talks about here, this is all the body work and everything that's been it's done. really cool. Yeah, this talks about here, uh, you know, the coilover shocks. Uh, you know, so you have the suspension, RSR, RSR coilover struts reinforced and raised, revalve uh, Bilstein shock inserts, uh, Bilstein upper uh, monoball camber plates, springs, hats, rotation bearings, hardware, new ball joints, turbo tie rod set and bump steer kit, you know, uh, poly uh, bronze bushing kit. I mean, it's, it's like, it's incredible, man. I mean, how much stuff has gone into this stuff? 
Talks about the shifter upgrades. I'm also gonna take some of the pictures off of this uh, stick here and I'll be sure to drop them in the video for you. Real quick guys, here is the jump drive and you can see here it has got lots and lots of photos uh, pretty much broken down into all the different areas that went into the build. Um, and here's just a couple of pictures I grabbed, just real quick. Everything from his inspiration at the top there to some of the wet sanding, getting the body ready, all the way to the final yellow green color. All right guys, so uh, turning the car on here. Now remember the car's already warmed up, so fires pretty much fires right up. Let's go for a drive. Now it's a single mass, single mass flywheel, right? So pretty easy to get it in out of gear. Doesn't require a lot of gas. Now this is a really bumpy road. Now this has racing suspension. You know, the bushings are, uh, are solid, so you're gonna feel just about everything, every undulation in the road. But overall, it doesn't beat you up too bad. It's definitely on the more comfortable side, um, you know, considering it's a race car or built to be a race car. Now, the wheel does pull every, you know, like if you've got basically a cut in on the road, the wheel will pull it. So that's one thing that definitely adds to the difficulty of driving this car. Transmission's got to warm up a little bit. Third's a little bit sticky. up a little bit I mean the car is really really loud there's no doubt about that you gotta be careful coming around a turn like this you gotta just make sure that the weight is balanced in the car
time. You know, if you're a driver and, you're, and you really enjoy just the shifting and, and the weight of the clutch and, and just, just the rawness of the, of the car, it's, it's really hard to beat. through the gears the brakes you know they're not modern brakes by any means but uh, they stop the car just got to apply a good amount of pressure to them you know my, like mo most Porsches you know you got to run them out to get the power so right now we're around 3,000 rpms in third you would want to be in second gear you know, if you were really trying to get the max power out of the car. But as soon as you open it up and it gets above four, it really starts to pull. The car is great. As you can hear. And you have plenty of horsepower. shifts in the car you know, obviously around these really really tight turns here's our run out point so let me show you uh, what this car can do here we'll do a second uh, third maybe fourth gear pull quick guys thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel i uh, sincerely appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed learning about this uh this 1974 irock tribute car i really really love it i think the next owner is going to get a very very cool car a rare piece of history something that's going to steal a lot of attention in all of the car shows and frankly just going to be a great car to drive uh, this car could absolutely be uh, be driven on the weekends successfully and taken on rallies from time to time. In fact, this actually rent, went to Ruckus uh, this year, 2022, and uh, the owner uh, drove it around for four days. Uh, or the you know Charles at, at Direct Auto, he said the car didn't give him any problems, other than the fact that it's just a, a lot of effort to drive. Uh, but he said he just enjoyed the heck out of it. So hope you guys enjoy the content as always. Uh, big shout out to Brian over here for doing the, the montage and making sure all this thing looks really, really hot on camera. Hope you enjoyed the point of view drive. Please subscribe. Uh, we're going to continue to make content. I have some really, really cool cars coming up. I've got an Aston Martin DBX 707. That's the new hot, you know, extra horsepower, uh, you know, Aston Martin SUV they've got. We've got a uh, F1 Vantage lined up in uh, British Racing Green, which is a beautiful color, beautiful car. I've got a Lamborghini SVJ. We're going to shoot Jude's SVJ, one of just a handful of SVJs in the entire state. Uh, so he's going to let us uh, shoot that one for him. And I've got some really cool electric cars coming as well. I've got the new Mercedes uh, EQ car coming. I think it's called an S580. Don't quote me on that. And then I've also got a, uh, a really cool um, EV6 Kia coming, uh, which is uh, Kia's new latest, greatest um, crossover SUV that's all electric. So 
getting a good mix of content here and uh, hopefully we can continue to shoot car content heading into August uh, and July. It's just been brutally hot, like I said earlier. So, so uh, just doing my best to, uh, to, you know, to work around it. If you have any thoughts, please comment. Please watch the video. Uh, watch time's huge. Please like and all that. It helps the algorithm or so I'm told. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for your attention. And that's it for us today. We'll talk to you later. Take it easy.